Hi, thank you for joining me. And in this video segment, what I would like to do is introduce five broad categories or types of reactions that you're likely to see at a Chem 1 or you know, AP, IB, Honors, College Chemistry level. Uh, certainly we can divide this into other classes um, and there are subclasses and frankly there's overlap between these. But the more we can kind of categorize, uh, the easier it is to understand and predict what is happening in a chemical reaction. <clears throat> so I actually have a video on these called Reaction Relationships on uh, YouTube somewhere. And that's what how the analogy I like to use here is the concept of relationships. So the first one would be a synthesis. The key to a synthesis is you're going from two simple um, substances to a more complex one. So you're looking for two reactants going to one product, much like a marriage, and the two shall become one, right? <clears throat> much like a marriage. Now, these two could be either elements or compounds. If they are both elements, really all you're doing is formula writing. So if I've got um, potassium plus nitrogen gas uh, and I want to combine them, um, I'm going to have potassium nitride form. I don't know why I picked nitrogen. That's kind of a weird one. And then I have to balance it. Okay, don't forget to do that. And depending on the teacher, you may be asked for states. That would be a solid, that would be a gas, and this would be a solid. Um, you're going to use your formula writing rules, right? So if it's two elements, it's formula writing rules. If, on the other hand, you have uh, compounds involved, uh, that involves memorizing um, some different rules for the reactions that I will go into separately. <clears throat> Decomposition, de, uh, decomposition is the opposite. It's much like a divorce. The one product going to two simpler, excuse me, one reactant going to two simpler products. Again, those products can be elements or compounds. Um, if I decomposed mercury to oxide, uh, solid, mercury to oxide into mercury liquid plus oxygen gas, okay, that's going to be a decomposition. So you just bring it to its elements and that should be hopefully pretty straightforward on that one. Um, if there are compounds involved, again, there are going to be some rules that you need to memorize. Now, the next class are called single replacement. And these are typically going to involve ionic compounds and acids, or sometimes metal in water. And if you have very, very reactive metals, they will react um, with water. Um, but what you're looking for are two reactants and two products. But this is important. When you do that, one of the reactants is going to be an element. So you have an element plus a compound going to an element plus a compound. And you can either replace, whoops, sorry about that. You can either replace the cation or the anion, okay, depending on the type of reaction. And um, when we're talking about anion replacement, uh, that would be the halogens primarily that, that you would be looking at. The metals will be all over the place, the types of metals that you would see. And um, now I, this is kind of a, a, a partner switcheroo we'll, we'll use maybe, uh, well, frankly, I think Denzel Washington can be used as analogies for all attractive forces in chemistry. So if this is me and this is my husband and this is Denzel, um, of course, Denzel is going to break in. And so then I get Denzel, and I'm sorry, 
my dear husband, but you'd be all by yourself in that situation. Okay, so it's kind of a partner switcheroo or, you know, kick your partner to the curb and get a new one. Um, we won't get into marriage because that's not real pleasant on that one. So we'll talk dancing. All right. Um, the next one, instead of a single replacement, sometimes called displacement. Okay, there's a few different names. You've got to make sure you um, read those carefully. All right, this is again two and two. So much like single replacement was two and two, two reactants, two products. This is the differentiation here. Um, remember, the single replacement had elements with compounds. Here we've got compounds and compounds. Okay, so um, this is like, you know, a, you know, dancing on the dance floor. And in this case... Here's, here's me and my husband, and here's Denzel and his wife, and we're going to trade partners. It's often helpful to put the charges, you know, below or above. Just make sure you erase it in your final answer. Um, it helps to put the charges so you know the negatives are going to trade places with negatives. We're not going to end up with positives with positives or negatives with negatives in the end. Opposites attract in chemistry. Now, uh, at the honors level, we would save or reserve combustion typically for organic compounds. So combustion is the reaction of a substance with oxygen. So every element would react with oxygen. You would be looking for words like burned or combusted. And if you're one of my students, I typically won't supply the oxygen. I want you to know that that means the addition of oxygen. If it's complete combustion, we're going to get carbon dioxide and water. Balancing these would be the trickiest thing you'd come across likely. Uh, if it is in complete combustion, then you could make carbon monoxide or soot. So if you go camping and you've got your, um, you know, your your pan over that camp stove, and if you don't have a, a good flame, you're going to have incomplete combustion, and you'll get that black carbon soot all over the bottom of it. When we have fireplaces, we'll often have carbon monoxide detectors um, so we can detect uh, if we're getting high levels of carbon monoxide because of course that can kill us right and um, so we would want to know about that incomplete combustion uh, so uh, anytime you're adding oxygen now there is a synthesis for example if we had mercury back to that mercury example plus oxygen to make mercury oxide this time as a synthesis yeah, technically that could be a combustion. I, I think it fits more as a synthesis because two are becoming one, right? So you want to um, be careful of a little bit of that overlap and how your particular instructor handles those overlaps. Now, sometimes it's helpful to visualize these in more of a particle molecule uh, model. So this is you've got two here becoming one. So this implies more of a, an element plus an element gives you a compound. Maybe another particle diagram would have um, a compound plus an element giving you a more complicated compound. All right, so a lot of times I'll put those in color for you. Um, so just be real careful with those particle diagrams. This is one becoming two, so that's the divorce. That is the decomposition. You notice here that C is cutting in and taking B's place. So this is an element and a compound going to an element and a compound. Okay, so this would be your single replacement. And then in this last one, you have a compound AB plus a compound CD. And you'll notice that D and B are switching places. The anions in this place you know, are switching places. So we get two new compounds. 
And that's the differentiation between single and double. Watch for elements for your single. All right. Okay, so that's an introduction. Um, let me go over a couple quick examples of these. All right, in this first one, we have one compound. Yes, there are two of those compounds, but one compound goes to two, so this is a decomp. In this one, I added oxygen. I combusted, added the oxygen to the carbon and the hydrogen. That's going to be your simplest type of combustion of an organic carbon-based molecule. Here I have a compound, I have an element, going to a new compound plus an element, so I've got two and two, and I know that it's a single replacement because of the presence of those elements. Okay, here I've got two and two, I want to distinguish that from a double replacement, so I have to label those an element and a compound, compound and an element. That's what's going to tell me this is a single replacement. Okay, and then just a couple more here. I've got again two reactants and two products so I have to make sure I distinguish double and single. This is a compound plus a compound, new compound, new compound. That's what makes that a double replacement. And here I've got two becoming one. That's our synthesis combination. And once in a while books I'll have subtly different names for those. So make sure you read your textbook. They are valuable references. Thanks for joining me. Hope this helps you in your journey of chemistry.